welcome you to the center. Um, I want to give you a little rundown about what we do here at the center because I think this directly relates to the projects that happen here. Um, it's a pretty special place. Um, we have visiting artists here, which I think a lot of you are aware of because that's our very close um, public component to our program, but we also um, have uh, fund larger projects through fellowships. Mike Smith and the Center for Urban Pedagogy are doing a very big program here. But we also have affiliates who are artists who work within these studios here. And uh, this year we started our first graduate affiliate program, and Azra is one of our graduate affiliates along with Tad Hirsch. Um, what we're looking for in a graduate affiliate is that um, there are artists being educated here at MIT in the uh, um, visual and uh, Master of Visual Sciences, but the artists that we have working here are graduate affiliates are students who are in other areas who um, self-identify as artists. And so we thought it would be important to bring them here into the center so that they could be doing their work with um, the help of the center staff. And then also in this space here at the center would become a place where ideas can mix between the different kinds of disciplines at MIT as well as um, the artists can have um, a support structure. Um, and through, um, through this kind of program, the Lost Highways Expedition has um, found a small program here, or a small home here because of Oscar. Um, in the past months, um, County Park has been working here, developing the project that began last year when Marinette Tzapodrich, um, CADS's first um, senior fellow, was in residence. From her workshop, she organized through CADS New Maps of Europe. This project took root in the minds of her students and colleagues and was grown to include a wide international collaborative group while retaining its hub at CADS. Um, when founding our graduate program, we hope for projects like these to develop, where thinking across disciplines, um, but with inventive artistic approaches, could be centered here. Um, and so it's my pleasure to introduce Azra and Kim. Um, Azra, I'm going to give the bio now, the standard practice. Um, Azra Zanija is an artist and architect based here in Cambridge and a PhD candidate in the Aga Khan Program for Islamic Architecture in the Department of History, Theory, and Criticism of Art and Architecture at MIT. Born in Sarajevo, she received a degree in architecture at the Technical University of Graz, Austria, and received her Master's in Architecture from Princeton University. Her work has been widely published and exhibited in venues such as the Generali Foundation in Vienna, the Biennial in Valencia, the Berlin Art Fair, the Graz Biennial of Media and Architecture, and the Gallery of Contemporary Arts in Leipzig, and the Liverpool Biennial. She is currently researching a dissertation on contemporary Islamic architecture in post-war Bosnia and Herzegovina and the place of Islam in Western Europe and in the United States. And Kim is the founder of Storefront for Art and Architecture in New York and the International Center for Urban Ecology in Detroit. Um, he's the curator of Images of the Future, the architecture of a new geography at the Kwangju Biennial in Korea, and co-curator and artist for Berlin-based um, shrinking cities. A low fellow at Harvard in 1996-97, he was a visiting chair in the urbanism at the University of Detroit Mercy School of Architecture in 2000 and 2001. He's also the editor of Urban Ecology, Detroit and Beyond, which is at the MIT Press Bookstore. And I'm really glad that the both of them have been here. It's been exciting to um, see the activity happen. And I'll allow Azra and Kim to introduce their project to you. And I also welcome you, if you're interested in this project, that you can contact me here at the Center for Advanced Visual Studies, as well as these two, and we can get you more involved. So thank you very much to you guys. <laughs> Um, thank you. Um, can you hear me okay? Uh, because I cannot hear. I'm hearing myself here. <clears throat> the, uh, it's a pleasure to be here again, uh, actually in the course of the same project, uh, the Lost uh, Highway Expedition. The, the first time I was here uh, at CAVS with Maria Tice Puterec because of, at that time we were uh, at the beginning of starting of our project which I can tell you more in detail, uh, we're going to tell you later. But the general uh, idea of the project, uh, The Lost Highway, which is the first part of uh, uh, a uh, three-stage uh, project called Europe Lost and Found, 
the Lost Highway is a, a, a first event that we try to create. You might think that we're a little bit idealistic, but maybe you will understand more further later. Is that a temporary society, uh, so that it would not be, uh, it, it could be experimental without threatening the other society. Uh, also, I think the society is uh, more temporary than ever, and, uh, and this is the reason why we uh, uh, project ourselves in that fashion. The other is, idea that we had was uh, the notion of moving cities, uh, that we could create uh, a city out of our participants in Lost Highway, uh, that geographically enlarged enough itself to occupy a city, actually nine cities in this case, and uh, that we are uh, uh, affirming and, and studying uh, the condition of a moving city in contemporary society. Then we also uh, uh, kind of fashion idea about somewhat functioning as nomadic universities. Uh, this is a practical question. One is that we think that we are interested, and they would be interested also, that uh, universities will eventually participate in this project and engage in a, uh, a, a, a classroom workshop or a studio that is uh, learning uh, uh, basically from moving itself through territories and spaces. Uh, so it's a kind of antidote to the notion of educational institution uh, based on uh, one location and attracting the students. Instead, the educational institution goes to various locations and attracts itself to a place for educating itself. Then we had idea about uh, being stateless state. Uh, and this is something that is uh, that uh, recognizing uh, dramatic uh, uh, transition of uh, the idea of the states, uh, uh, physical and uh, uh, constitutional and, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, representation of the state. We're very much interested uh, in this project as well. So uh, we could go now to Azra. She can explain more about the Lost Highway expedition itself. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> improvisation. Okay, thank you very much for coming. And thanks uh, to CAVS to, for organizing this event. Uh, we will be presenting a project in process and uh, with this uh, explanations. We want to invite you actually to participate in this expedition that is taking um, place in August, uh, this August. Uh, we will present first you know, how the, what the term uh, Lost Highway means, what is this highway, where we are going to be moving, a little bit of the project background, how this process started and how it is um, continuing um, to develop and where you can dock on. Uh, then we'll go over some issues that we have been dealing in our project and um, that framed um, our interest so far and could be expanded by you, of course. Uh, and then we will show some of the project logistics. Um, the Lost Highway, uh, oh, before I start, these are the slides uh, from Kyong and Marietta's travel. Uh, when was this? Uh, uh, it was from Christmas to uh, through New Year of uh, 2004 to 2005. Uh, four weeks period, we traveled through 12 cities together. Basically, they did the first route on this, on this highway. Uh, the Lost Highway is the fictional name for the old road made in ex-Yugoslavia to connect major cities of its republics. It connected Ljubljana, Zagreb, Beograd, and Skopje. The road was made in the 60s in the massive voluntary campaign of the peoples of all nationalities that constituted Yugoslavia. The highway was named according to the most important state parole, uh, Brotherhood and Unity, the Highway of Brotherhood and Unity. Uh, it is not accidental that this ideological name signified the connection line among different nations. Communist Yugoslavia was itself ideological construction 
created after the Second World War to unify the nations that had unresolved history of uh, mutual conflicts. As an ideology, Yugoslav communism believed that it has the capacity to overcome national divisions in the eternal run to over, toward universal wellness. However, communist eternity was brutally shortened during the 90s. The collapse of utopian system stripped down the concept of national unification. Old national conflicts were awakening up for the new bloodshed war. Beside the establishment of independent states, the war scored several hundred thousands of killed and a million refugees. Yugoslavia was buried violently for the long. Yet the highway survived and became even more improved. After the war, new tracks and services were added according to European Union standards. Today, this highway looks like any other European highway uh, it is comfortable and without uh, local identity. The ideological meaning that once marked the belief of the people that were building it had been lost forever. This highway of post-brotherhood and non-unity today only functions as a linear mechanism in the framework of the so-called West Balkan, a term invented only recently by the European Union. Just as the Lost Highway, the West Balkan is a territory without content. It is a political determination that was defined from the outside, aiming to address ruined and chaotic agglomeration of unsettled nations with common history. For these nations, the term West Balkan is not understood in terms of its interconnections, but rather as a set of separate obligations toward European institutions. Following the line of uh, Lost Highway through the unknown territory of contemporary and future meanings of West Balkan, participants uh, of the Lost Highway expedition will explore new modes of linking different entities. Just like any other expedition, the Lost Highway is not determined and it is also not predictable. However, the data possibly found on the highway could present an interesting matter, not only for the region, but also for European Union, that is currently suffering the unsuccessfulness of its concept of integration. At the end, the expedition participants will also tackle the question of how to construct a concept of a better life anywhere in a non-utopian time and without ideological illusions. Lose yourself in the Balkans and find yourself in Europe. This expedition motto refers to our voyage in the unknown territories of the future of Europe. At the same time, this future is not only to be found, but also to be constructed. And this is what we would like you to do. So. Uh, we also want, I forgot to mention that we want to use this to have a dialogue with you uh, <coughs> afterwards and uh, get some ideas and criticism from you, our project, because we, we, we're developing this constantly and uh, still you know, have a lot of questions and uh, 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 some of the, uh, our assumption uh, need, probably needs to be uh, uh, corrected or uh, enriched at least. Uh, so the, 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 the whole initial idea of Lost Highway was actually uh, brought first by a group called uh, School for, uh, uh, Missing Studies, SMS, which is actually based in New York uh, as a group, No More Architecture, and also uh, based in, uh, in Belgrade uh, with uh, uh, a group there also called SMS around uh, School of Architecture at the University, Faculty of Architecture at the University of Belgrade. Uh, we have intention of doing this, what three phase would be, would be the first phase would be balkanization. And then the next would be the idea of questioning about the uh, impact uh, uh, and the uh, negotiation uh, of Europeanization. And then in the end, uh, we would like to see if this could be illustrated somehow uh, visually uh, uh, in some kind of uh, form of, uh, about the future that we could possibly imagine. Um, each project will build the base for the next one. 
And like the Lost Highway, uh, the, the whole project is based on the movement uh, from one place to another, from one idea to another, and one chapter to another. So th this narrative-based work, uh, I think, is a very important part for, for us. Uh, but however, at each stage, we were uh, we plan to realize an expedition, an, ex an exhibition and publication, other things that are very typical to cultural production. Uh, so uh, I would just maybe skip some of these things. Uh, uh, a little bit so we can move on, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> after that, uh, as we mentioned, be, uh, I was mentioned before, uh, myself and Maria Tiza Poterich, we took a four week trip uh, 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 at Christmas 2004 to, uh, I think it was like uh, 24th of January. And since that, uh, we uh, first thing that happened was actually here at CAVS. Uh, when she was invited uh, as a uh, fellow here and uh, worked together with Azra Aksamia, Aksamia and uh, uh, what's it called, uh, 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 independent seminar, a project called the New Map of Europe, mapping a balkanized society uh, as an independent study seminar. Uh, and the idea was the examination of contemporary Balkan cities as moving cities, cities of extremes. The seminar aimed to take these cities out of their territorial grounding and place them in a larger, more global perspective. The shattering of state and the huge population shift that marked the Balkan in the 1990s were seen as microcosm of changes to come in Europe as well as perhaps in the 20th century included. That's probably the reason why that Europe has always been fascinated about the Balkan, uh, among other reasons. <laughs> Seminar participants explore contemporary mapping practices and develop their own dynamic mapping projects which reflected on contemporary culture while allowing for understanding of populations and cities, regions in more or less in temporal terms. Uh, I, I, my apology that I don't have uh, uh, visual material from these pro uh, this seminar to be shown here right now. The second seminar was somewhere else, and it was called Balkanization from Metaphor to Architectural S Strategy, which was collaborative exchange between, as I mentioned before, uh, the, the SMM groups uh, taking place at the Graduate School of Architecture at Pratt, organized by Serjan Jovanovic, Vice, uh, and the Faculty of Architecture at University of Belgrade, led by Ivan Kuchina. Uh, they were engaged in researching, reading, mapping, uh, an array of contemporary sources related to war architecture strategies. Specific focuses were placed in recent war in the Balkan and further attempt to transfer its strategic strategies of progressively dividing territories and what kind of effect that it could have in planning and architectural realms. Uh, since then, uh, the project was uh, 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 then began to be called Europe Lost and Found, and with the support of uh, Slovenian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Centrala Future Foundation for uh, Centrala Foundation for Future Cities were, was founded in Rotterdam. And uh, now we're going back into uh, the beginning of this, uh, the slides. And basically, we needed to create in order to build the infrastructure for the project. And then out of that, we have been working with eight people, myself, uh, Azra, uh, Catherine Carl, Anna Stokic, Ivan uh, Kuchina, Mark Nealon, uh, of course, Maria Tisa, and Serjan. Okay. We have uh, plans to, uh, we have come to an agreement with the exhibition uh, in the uh, result of the, this the Lost Highway. Uh, first at Württembergischer Kunstverein in Stuttgart, uh, February, March to 2007, and followed by exhibitions at Moderna Galleria and Scoots in Ljubljana, May through June 2007.
Okay, so I can hear myself very well because <laughs> I'm feeding off my own microphone. Okay. I have to like go. All right. Yeah. Uh, then I'm sorry to bore you about this kind of technical things, but I just want to tell you that we've been doing a lot of sh uh, a lot of stuff to uh, get it organized. <laughs> um, the idea that uh, then that it would the second time. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah. Then we have this idea. We, we're still developing this project, right? Yeah, and then, so we want to get into discussion soon, I hope. Is that, that we want to, uh, the second stage, we want to also create another expedition, but it would be based on the peripheral cities of EU mainly. And uh, I've already, we have already made contacts in, in uh, Barcelona, Marseille, Na uh, Naples, Rotterdam, and Belfast. And hopefully that we can be so ambitious and ideological that we could go on to Budapest, Bucharest, Saloniki, you know, Istanbul, why not, Beirut, Cairo, Tangier, all these places. Sure, right? Uh, what it, why? Because uh, Europe, uh, in, as some people have, uh, famous people have claimed, there is no state in Europe. Uh, Europe cannot define itself, uh, and uh, Bosnia is a, uh, a metaphor of entire Europe. Right? So while it is trying to construct its own self-identity and trying to make itself distinct from the others that is increasingly uh, unwilling to accept, in fact, very willing to expel them, that it is actually being defined by the others already. So we are very interested in kind of surrounding the fortress Europe and attack it from the outside, so to speak, and to really uh, try to redefine what would be the, uh, the, uh, uh, the social, cultural, economic uh, geography of Europe in the future. I think a lot of people are very interested in, 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 in this perspective. So for the operation of Lost Highway, we had to, uh, we were very delighted to get uh, uh, interest and commitment from various organizations in each of the cities, such as uh, Scoots in Ljubljana, MAMA, Platforma 981, Vihave in Zagreb, Kuda in Novi Sad, Prelom Collective and School of Missing Studies in Belgrade, Missing Identity in Pristina, Press for Exit in Skopje and Proba in Sarajevo. So that's my end of administrative presentation. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Now I have to start the PowerPoint, right? Yeah. Okay. So now we will show some of the um, issues that have fed into this project so far. Um, one is the definition so far of the term of balkanization as it came out from uh, Sergei Ivanovich and Ivan Kuchina's seminar. Um, if globalization stands for the increasing interconnectedness of people and places through converging processes of economic, political, and cultural exchange, then the term balkanization can be understood as its counteraction, perceived as a centrifugal force that undermines or divides the state. Balkanization recoils the unity and the power or the centripetal forces of shared historical legacy and the unitary economic system. Where am I? Sorry. The term balkanization can be understood as the counteraction of globalization perceived as a centrifugal force that undermines and divides the state, balkanization recoils the centripetal forces of shared historical legacy and the unitary economic system that augment political unity and the power of the nation state. Balkanization breeds ethnic nationalism that fuels identity politics in the absence of real democratization originating from the Balkan region that is historically contested through periodical power shifts of the different empires. Balkanization emerged as a form of micronationalism, 
or ethnic, linguistic, cultural and or religious separatism uh, and the major source of geopolitical tension today. However, its negative image has been tampered with other interpretations such as the new forms of religious freedom or increased democratization that stimulates the growth of group identities with agendas of self-rule from below. Um, okay, I will come to this later, but I will show you this best uh, through some examples. Um, I think we can start now. The, the recent history of um, the Western Balkans makes um, nationalist motivations in building strategies as understandable to some extent as they were predominantly fueled by the horrific experiences from the recent war. This is a photograph by uh, the Bosnian artist Tarek, Tarek Samarach uh, from Srebrenica um, documenting the genocide uh, or part of the genocide performed here on over 10,000 uh, Bosnian uh, men and uh, boys. Um, with the end of the communist era, uh, the collapse of Tito's Yugoslavia um, released nationalist extremism that culminated in a brutal conflict among its former federal republics. And its violent conflict um, or escalation first affected Slovenia, then Croatia, then Bosnia and Herzegovina, and finally Kosovo. Uh, in Bosnia, for instance, um, the genocide performed on Bosnian Muslims and uh, by Bosnian Croats and Bosnian Serbs started in 1992, right after Bosnia's sovereignty as a state uh, was internationally recognized. Over 2,500 people, 250,000 people were killed on all sides. A greater number was injured. Uh, war also caused more than two million refugees, tens of thousands of raped women and girls, and over 3,000 uh, destroyed architectural monuments. Next one, please. Uh, the controversial date on peace agreement was then signed in uh, December 1995, and it finally brought um, end to the displacement of refugees, ethnic cleansing, concentration camps, mass rapes, and other violations of human rights. Um, although um, the end of fighting was welcomed by the most, uh, a compromise made for the peace divided the country into two entities, the Federation of Bosniaks and Croats and the um, uh, Republic of Srpska, thus effectively uh, legitimizing the new brutally constructed political and demographic landscape. Uh, leave that on. No, no, back. Um, this, this internal political boundary is um, not the only one that is tearing the Bosnian state apart um, and creating the difficulties of the peaceful coexistence between the two entities. Uh, the present conflict is rendered in the Bosnian demographic structure. When you look at these maps from before and after the war, you see the significant difference of uh, fragmented territories with a high mixture where there was you know, no more than 40% of majority in, in one little territory. And after the war, um, the territories became highly consolidated with 90% majorities that are ethnically uh, clean and, and consolidated. Um, following this massive destruction, of the built environment during the war and um, considering this demographic structure, Bosnia's uh, religious space is now being modified um, and this is visible in the mushrooming phenomenon of uh, religious architecture where uh, mosques and churches um, are now signif uh, control or signifying territorial uh, dominance. Next one, please. Um, within this phenomenon, there is competitiveness for visibility. This is an Orthodox church in Jezero. Um, it is not finished nor yet in use, but uh, next, please. Um, you see that the, the church tower was given the priority in completion. Um, next. And such 
expression of territorial dominance uh, even more explicit in the city of Mostar, where Croats have put a uh, Catholic cross on the top of the hill, and whose you know, nightly illumination and gigantic size um, aim for remote and perpetual presence. Also in Skopje, too. Yeah. yeah. In the city itself, um, you see the height of this oversized church tower. Next. Um, this, this church tower was um, destroyed in the war, and the Croats actually hurried up uh, with the reconstruction of it before uh, it was agreed with the rest of the city and the protection of monuments and um, to build it you know, more in a, with a more extreme height. Um, and you know, the, the, it, this height of this tower was only limited by a couple of meters by the height of the Gothic cathedral in Zagreb, which it didn't dare to supersede. Next one. Uh, Muslims on the other side reacted Mostar to this uh, with another kind of monumentality, um, referencing their regional ancestry uh, of the Ottomans but enhancing it with new, more monumental features. While these two minarets originally symbolized royal patronage, uh, this historical reference uh, is here missing, but it became replicated in another regions on uh, also monumental scale. Next one. Uh, like this mosque in Ustikolina, it's a little village on a boundary to a Republic of Srpska. This is, uh, was the highest minaret in Europe, 60 meters, um, informally built uh, in re reconstruct, or instead of reconstructing the uh, old one and the uh, new race, the, the main mufti of Bosnia ordered uh, the destruction of this minaret because the Serbs uh, were irritated by this over height. <coughs> Um, next one. Another example from Krajina. This is a region that was not affected by uh, destruction of monuments. Uh, the new mosque was literally built in the courtyard of the old one, and that not because more space was needed. Uh, this trend for architectural display of religious dominance shows um, the infiltration of political boundaries uh, or politics in, into space. Uh, and architecture, and um, signifying, next one, uh, territorial control, <laughs> mosques and churches have replaced the, the, the national flags that fulfilled this purpose right after the war. They are solidified flags, and they reflect uh, in the instrumental role of the country's uh, religious institutions in its spatial politics. Sadly, mosques and churches often act as special instruments for continuation of the war in the time of peace. Um, next one, please. And then, you know, the, the tempering of the negative images of uh, balkanizations with uh, these new forms of religious freedom um, and the growth of group identities can be seen in examples like this where uh, this community, these are all survivors of a concentration camp from the uh, village of Srednje uh, that were organized in a sort of working action and are rebuilding their mosque, they are rebuilding their community. They literally came with two plastic bags um, uh, when they survived, and now they are you know, constructing this with their own hands. Um, yeah, I think now we'll go to you. you you wanted to say it, but oh, okay. <clears throat> um, this is an image of uh, Mamutica, which is the largest uh, housing block for to house 10,000 uh, residents in uh, uh, Novi uh, Zagreb, which is a population of about 200,000. You see that was built outside of uh, Zagreb, across the river from the old city. Uh, as a part of uh, 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 Yugoslav's uh, national uh, housing uh, project. But since the so-called the 
the fragmentation of Yugoslavia. Uh, fragmentation is not only happened in the political level, uh, geopolitical level, but it also took place in all aspects of uh, life there, uh, obviously economic uh, as well. But it's the, the society, the state, if you will, uh, basically pixelized. And uh, that the state, uh, for a different in, uh, in, in terms of what, uh, which republic that you are at, they have a different kind of uh, uh, the, the length or uh, the, the depth of uh, 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 this, this powering of the state. And the state was basically operated by the people themselves, so to speak. So you have this idea, you get the feeling about state has diminished itself to, uh, let's say, a size of a, a family, a clan, or even individuals. So what you get in the end is no longer these kind of large projects and large architecture or planning. You get small things that we like to call as urban villas. For example, these that are on the road from, let's say, Skopje into Pristina, because that's the only way you can get in. Uh, internationally, and you see these popped up uh, everywhere. Uh, in Pristina, Skopje, uh, uh, and uh, uh, is major uh, proponent of uh, this kind of architecture. Uh, they are expressing uh, their own eclectic individuality uh, without the state controlling them and uh, mixing Orientalism and Modernism and historical style of any choice they like. Uh, you was, and uh, then hybridization of multiple style for, uh, occurs at many times, and it loses authentic style, reflects the loss of cultural memories uh, through, let's say, war or uh, the the disappearance of a state or a, a identity of a larger body of state like Yugoslavia. Okay. Uh, one of the most interesting uh, idea of transition, uh, uh, reconstruction, or even you might say genesis uh, would be uh, uh, not this one. <laughs> uh, you see, I'm sorry, I missed a lot of slides here. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, let me skip a little bit. This is, was a very controversial project. It's quite old now. Uh, I think it's already, this picture is 10 years old, but it's a house two brothers built on top of another building in center of Belgrade near mm -hmm. the main bus station. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so their illegal constructions are everywhere. Further you go down south. Uh, it w I was told that one time during the war period, there was 300,000 illegal businesses in Belgrade alone. Uh, meeting, counting cars, open trunks, uh, you know, cloths on the street, you know, sidewalk, and so forth. And so you have this kind of a, a, a certain aspect of changing of the balance of the state and citizens and, and so forth. And I think this is one of the main and perhaps interesting thing that we would like to explore with you at the Lost Highway. Uh, here is a uh, world famous uh, mayor, the most uh, 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 mayor of the year in, I in think, Europe. In Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, the former artist, uh, former minister of culture, Mayor Eddie Rama, uh, has come up with this idea of due to low budget of the, uh, you know, you can imagine, uh, uh, Urbania, uh, that, that he started to. Uh, produce campaign to paint uh, city buildings. And it became very popular. And uh, of course, with the uh, Tirana Biennale, uh, uh, that later artists themselves were invited to design uh, 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 facades for these things as well. Uh, and uh, then, but we also think that in some ways that uh, uh, that uh, the European Union as well is also experiencing some aspect of this, particularly I think in, in, in like uh, somewhat like the idea of nostalgia, a return in my opinion to the bourgeois society, 
This example is in the region of Ancona area in uh, the uh, eastern coast uh, of Italy, where you have modernism is dead, both e in the east and west. And here is, uh, was a housing project that was favored. Uh, but now that Italians leave these high rises that are built in the country just outside of town, and they like to live in these new <clears throat> brand new 600-year-old uh, Renaissance uh, apartments or uh, urban villas, so to speak. And then the high rises are basically occupied by immigrants, mostly from the, uh, North Africa. Okay. Uh, they, should I read any of these, or we just go? Yeah, we'll just, we'll just go. go yeah. over there. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, um, the uh, one of the great examples of this kind of uh, uh, fragmentations or pixelization uh, in the, uh, Europe itself, or let's say islanding, uh, so to speak, uh, is the, uh, this uh, new development called Havelai in, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, uh, near a city called Den Bosch, uh, which uh, Maria Tisa and I worked together also on this project. Uh, and uh, because uh, the, the European cities are like the American cities before, are currently experiencing migration of residents from urban to rural, suburban, suburbanization of European cities, which can be clearly seen in the Netherlands because uh, the, uh, like a project like uh, VNEX famous project uh, in the 15 years, basically you could uh, come to an end, say, uh, that led to sub suburbanization of Dutch middle class, leaving the cities uh, to the immigrants. Uh, sounds very familiar, uh, like here. Uh, so you have cities like Den Haag and Rotterdam now 50% uh, non-Dutch. And uh, they're also predicted by year 2100 that only 25% of the population in Netherlands would be ethnically, racially Dutch. So it brings in the question of the relation between the history and cultural identity, the authority that is attached to the land. That would become more uh, difficult to defend. And these are another condition that we're very interested in. And that's why you see the Lost Highway talks a lot about temporary, stateless, moving, and et cetera. And uh, so. Uh, I think that basically we could now go into the uh, talk more about the Lost Highway itself and the logistics and how we uh, see that it could possibly operate. Sorry. Oh, wait. Okay, now we, we should jump into it. Yeah, yeah, we should because okay, we. Thank now you, Midori already, Taki, for yeah. this uh, map. <laughs> Um, Midori is also a, a recent graduate from the School of Architecture who is collaborating uh, with us on this project. Um, well, uh, in terms of travel, this project should be self-organized, self-funded, uh, and self um, what else? Self? <laughs> Self-help project. Self-help. <laughs> um, you don't have to uh, travel or stay together. Participants can enter or exit the expedition at any point. There is uh, this timeline, a sequence of event that is planned in a sequence of two days. If you would go through each city, uh, you would be, let's say, two days in one city and one day is planned for a travel in between. Uh, it starts from Ljubljana, goes Zagreb, Novi Sad, Belgrade, uh, Pristina, Skopje, Tirana, Podgorica, and then and in Sarajevo. But and you can make the connections through. Yeah. Yeah. The dotted. I was just going to say the dotted line is a, a rough uh, articulation of the lost. I mean the highway of brotherhood and unity. Where the, uh. the actual highway actually yeah. is. Um, we will. We are now working currently on. Um, a web page that will provide um, you know, a networking system for um, people to organize uh, the stay and, and to give the information also for the travel car sharing systems and so on. 
Um, events happening in these cities may include guided tours, presentations, um, different forums, and then different <coughs> forms of collaborations in the host cities, but also you know, participants are invited to contact and initiate projects with the individual cities and uh, get themselves involved. Um, yeah. Well, basically, the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, we are uh, uh, continually developing in the way that I uh, mentioned before, in a very narrative from one to another, right? So uh, we say this framework that, uh, like one thing that she mentioned, um, Azra mentioned, is that, that you don't have to follow this uh, uh, the way that we have laid out. You can, like, let's say, go to Novi, start from Novi Sad uh, early, and then see the fifth and sixth of events that we program, and then you decide that you don't want to go other places. You go to Podgorica and go through the middle of the territory to, let's say, experience not cities but the peripheral areas. Okay, <clears throat> for example, right? and join the group <coughs> later, for example. So that is, and also that we're working with these uh, organizations in these cities and the artist groups in the city. Originally, that we had an idea, okay, it's like the, based on the experience that Marietis and I had, which was that guided tour by some really interesting people that we had, uh, they took us, uh, uh, let's say conference with local experts, with invited people from outside to talk about that particular place and its issues, and maybe there's a workshop and so forth. But we also feel that it doesn't have to run this way, that the, these groups and organizations, the last discussion we had was uh, in the meetings in Zagreb, Ljubljana, and Belgrade uh, uh, a month and a half ago, uh, with many of them was that they might be, it might be better for them to do a project, organize a project, uh, so that that becomes the event and that people participate in that. We also see the idea of that people who travel there, uh, that, uh, that it's not like they're just going there to uh, see, only, only to see something, only to do what they want to do. Of course, they can do that but maybe they would like to engage uh, and collaborate in project with the people there or the organization there. Or maybe they participate to help them, you know, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that the idea of a traveler as a privilege becomes less. And uh, we promote this uh, kind of integration. Uh, and the way it sort of works is kind of like Albanian pyramid scheme scheme number two and three. The two is that I invite you, you can invite somebody else. You don't need to tell me who you are inviting, okay? Ultimately, everybody has to sign up on the website to register, right? And uh, we are going to ask you some information about you, like whether you make 250,000 or you make 500,000 a year, okay? Uh, and, uh, uh, or, you know, you could predict that you will two years from now. Uh, but the, uh, the idea is that, that we want to basically decentralize as much as we can. We started this project, but we don't want to die with this project, right? Yeah. No. So uh, we want to empower everybody, so to speak, right? That's what we say, self-help, you know, so forth. Um, then, but the idea is really, in a way, is to create a society. How do you make a society, you know, even just for a few weeks, right? So uh, that's one way to start, but then we need a really good form of communication in real time through space, right? So that we can have this uh, idea that anybody in the travel can contact anybody else and anybody else can contact you, right? But since, uh, although we have, you know, applied for, you know, money in all these places, but uh, we won't know until very late, just a week before we start this, maybe? No, a couple months before. 
so we have to plan B, the Balkan way, with not doing things with nothing. So uh, Todd here at CABS, again, we're benefiting from the uh, MIT expert <laughs> facilities and mind here. He came up with, based on his experience, here comes another suggestion, which is that the pyramid scheme number three, which is basically SMS uh, a mobile phone, OK? And, but you ha we have to construct a kind of like a pyramid, like a tree, where one person is responsible for, let's say, three other person. And so that you can SMS to three other person, and th that three other people SMS to three other, it becomes nine, and then spreads, right? And then that when people leave in and out of the system, somebody will find on our website a graph that shows our society with numbers and people. You plug yourself into a place because you, are, you want the society to work, right? So you volunteer yourself to reconnect the society on the missing link, so for example. So these are the kind of ways that we, uh, we want. And also that we look at working in a very heuristic way. We have curators in this project. I don't know, 15 curators, just, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> exhibition spaces ourselves, associate curators, do all this work plan. People wanted to do this project very much from the beginning. But we have tendencies to look at in cultural projects from the center and think about what's going to happen already, you know? Uh, we want to stop doing that. Uh, the idea, of course, this is not really completely true, can be worked out, but the expedition is to go into unknown territories and uh, without much knowledge and expectations. So we want to uh, basically limit that kind of uh, thoughts and uh, so that people can really learn from the experience and and not to have pre-thought idea that would limit their experiences. And the experience would give the ideas about the project that we could talk and discuss later uh, after the expedition. And, uh, and that becomes a source for the exhibitions and publication. It goes into more standard form of cultural production. Yeah, I think That's we it. should yeah. uh, leave the the happily balkanize out. Yeah, OK, that's right. We, we, we talk too much, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So we should stop. Yeah. Where is that thing? We've got to coordinate this, right? You know what? I have to open it up first, because I have to okay. open it up yet. Um, <clears throat> the first series of photos uh, were the, the, the ones that I took in our trip with Marietta. This is the stuff that she took. Uh, this uh, one. This is yours, OK. Maybe uh, it's enough, Kyung. No? No, actually, this is fine. This is okay. good, yeah. Uh, how do we? So we, we have been showing. Uh, and she collaborated with uh, uh, Sir John, and they wrote this beautiful uh, thing, and uh, we were play a little music along with this, I think. OK, this is four minutes. Marietica Potrec and Sergej Jovanovic. Thank <laughs> you. 
professor. Okay, so uh, actually recently that we have been planning this project more from the outside. But at the beginning of the project, we were pretty much involved from the inside of the territory and the ideas came from the people within. Um, actually, the initiation of, of and the whole idea of the Lost High Expedition came from Belgrade, from Ivan Kuchina. Um, so, where we are at now, we want to basically blur that boundary where um, we do not want to use the, the words like host cities. It's now in the process that we know what this meant. Uh, but once it's there, it's, that is Europe too. And um, everyone is the same kind of participants. We are all, so to say, units, either individual or institutional in a network of, um, of this society. Where, yeah. But there is no, on the, on the, on the practical level, it is difficult. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering how you. Um, the. Well. How do you. Um, well, I see, like, obviously, in Belgrade, in certain cities, you have probably a lot of local um, support and knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas in Tirana, you probably need to skip the knowledge up. I don't know, I'm just wondering how you. Well, it initially, I mean, the, it, it started, uh, you know, uh, a trip that, that started the whole thing. And uh, during that time, <coughs> we met uh, a lot of people. Right? Uh, we have contacts with significant people and groups in every city we have met. Uh, we have been in dialogue with them uh, on and off. Uh, not as much as we should, but it's a matter of just the structure and the way that we have had to work. First was we had to organize ourselves first, and that took like three quarters of the year. Then we uh, organizing in terms of like us, the exhibition spaces and uh, other like uh, the uh, uh, organize. But it's it's mostly half and half uh, from there and from you know elsewhere outside, right? Then the next step is that we will encounter with the people and groups in each city. So I'll be you know, there in a week, and I'll be there till September, you know, uh, uh, where I will be probably in every city. And, uh, and we have already started the dialogues with certain groups in Zagreb, and Belgrade, uh, we had meetings with uh, you know them uh, in Ljubljana. We actually have a plan for a conference in June, early June, first week of June, where all the representatives from all the cities and the exhibition space people, everybody will get together in Ljubljana for three days. Okay, but it's a, basically that's the next step that we're going to do is to continue dialogue with them by talking on the phone. Uh, talking, you know, visiting them, and as writing, and uh, have them think about ideas starting in a couple of weeks, right. and that's how we we, uh, we 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 have to work. Yeah. And you you might imagine this like a, this is like a snowball that starts a process, in which we are the beginning ball, and it may stay a ball, we don't know. So, but that minimum of the critical mass is there on people who are going to travel and the institutions that would like to participate. Uh, but this can grow on this pyramidal system of I invite you, you invite other people, and so on. So these organizations that we have now in the other cities, um, they are for sure with us, but they are not 
representative of their city. It's not only their opinion that counts. Other organizations can join in, or other individuals. Um, and it's really these people, you know, we part of them we we met or knew from before. It's a personal network that is, you know, how also you, they you have, have their to own start too. But they have their own network. Partly they are also working with each other. Um, already? already we don't have uh, access to all these resources present in the cities. We don't know all these people, but we count on them that they would spread out the word. Um, and then we will do a massive you know, advertising campaign to uh, spread it out to others that would not necessarily be informed by these networks that we have. Um, but we'll see, you know. It's, yeah. yeah. ways that you can isolate the motivating factors that do foster movement or dynamic across geographical regions and somehow figure out a way of uh, isolating or thumbnail, like disease, food, music, power, and looking at elements that actually motivate exchange between people and somehow coming up with some, what you're saying, like a project-based activity whether it's like planting a tree or some some activity on site that isolates a quality or dynamic that is specific to one of these things that you're looking at like really have why people move why people interact why people exchange and relocate and um and i don't know if there is something as banal as like a plant like something that uh is an action in the moment that that then has an impact a year from now, changes again. It's climate and <coughs> specific, but, in the, um, but it is uniform across all these different locations that you visit. So you go to a location, you do the same act, but it's specific because you're in this place with these people at this time in 2006. I don't know if it's something that you could replicate that will remain distinct, but it is a, yeah. Actually, um, this is on the... Already happening uh, on this homepage that we don't want to show because it's not <laughs> that you can uh, go mature there, yet. Yeah. Um, but uh, the idea is to, on this web page, have an infrastructure, a platform for both uh, really yeah, communicating and I put all my information there, can present myself. But then there's a bunch of collective projects happening. Uh, like a exhi exhibition, virtual exhibition space that is both infrastructural but also um, a dynamic map of the society where different people within the research for their own project what they want to do and for many artists like Pia Lindman who is a fellow here who is coming with us, performance for instance is a mean of her research. So she will do some kind of probes on each side and um, uh, repeat her ritual in these different <laughs> cities and put that information on the web to be uh, shared. But other projects like uh, Marisa, the, maybe. Yeah, Marisa Young, uh, visual arts graduate student here, um, she invented this Frisbee, uh, which is a device that's her piece of art that involves a social game, the mean of throwing, like you would throw a grenade, but also it's a game that, that can cross boundaries and leave traces of seeds uh, and let, so to say, grass or new, new things go, grow over. It's a very poetic, but also socially engaging project. So uh, there are projects like this that would leave uh, personal traces and personal networks that we cannot grasp some visual material that comes out of that we will have on the web, what they are willing to give us. Uh, other projects, for instance, we, through Ted Hirsch, who is a graduate fellow here, uh, we came to do the pirating of the Google map, <laughs> where um, fast, it's really fascinating. America is, uh, you can Google it and you see the whole you know, streets and everything, you can find each location. 
Europe and the Balkans is tabula rasa. There's nothing. There's, there's just, just a little section in northern Italy. Yeah, there's just a geographical outline. So They're our participants, building. by mapping and doing the projects, will start, there's a module that you can put over. Uh, so they are creating a collective map um, of locating things, real things with GPS or imaginary things. So it's a collective map of the future and subjective one. Uh, so there are projects like this, you know, and this can go into wide range of becoming like a Craigslist uh, of informal yellow pages uh, where I can sleep in a certain place and for cheap and uh, do car sharing and travel from one place to another or advertise an, uh, a restaurant and here's the best food, but I can also start exchanging uh, recipes and so on. So this is really dependent on the participants. We have established a couple of categories that we you know, find interesting as initiation, uh, but I think this will you know, progress with the participants. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> we don't know how well that it would work, uh, but uh, it all depends on you. <laughs> uh, but it brings out an interesting case where uh, there are many artists that, uh, this is a very traditional practice that artists get into, like uh, you have an idea, you know, uh, and you have your kind of way of doing it, right? your medium or something like that. And uh, this is a case where, you know, understandable, you're going to school, uh, you're in the market, you want to be successful, so you have to have your thing, right? And, uh, and so you go to the Balkan with the idea of applying this, you know, whether it's a Frisbee or whether it's something else, okay? Uh, I'm not saying against it, but there's also concern from our part uh, that, that uh, whether that is the kind of right approach, you know, uh, in relation with uh, what's there. It may work. Uh, but I think that we give a little maybe question mark to that kind of approach, for example. Because, I mean, frankly, you could do that anywhere, you know? So what would be specific? We think, you know, the WB is a very special place and needs a very special attention. Right? Uh, then you have, a, 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 we have thought uh, be, uh, beginning of an issue about, for instance, who decides, uh, let's say, okay, people can start things on their own, generate an idea, even uh, create a group and funding for it, and blah, blah. Totally independent, you know, right? But who decides the, what would be shown in the exhibition, published, and blah, blah? Right? Would that be the curators? Would that be like us, the Centrala, right? Or would it be the people who are in this society, right? So one of the things that we, beginning of that, that's what we've been uh, uh, developing, how you do that, right? And one of the first thing is that, I don't know whether there was some technical problem, but we applied to a funding that we may not get it because we had technical problem, but the idea was good, which is that, that we would grant like 1,000 euro research grant for about 25 people, right? So that they and who they des people decide among themselves. They put up the idea, they put up their background, and then you know it's kind of self-voted somehow. You know, of course, voting is pretty stupid, but you know maybe we can find a better way, more dialogue than that, just simply voting. Uh, those are things that we're trying to further develop in how that it could be self-determined, uh, which is the way the internet is. It's self-regulated, except the you know, state wants to control it. But uh, it's a self-regulated, self-governed uh, uh, society. You know? And in a lot of ways, that, uh, uh, that this Lost Highway, ALF and all that, is really reflecting and trying to embody a lot of those characteristics of behavior, whether it's the internet or whether it's the uh, other forms of uh, 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 fragmentations and self-generating. So like, for instance, uh, let me, so one thing that we read. Maybe I should give more questions. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I would. Let's get one. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Short question. I'm building on the current Balkan culture. Um, and I came also from a background where, as in these women, the famous women Balkan singers. And in Concord, just three weeks ago, every year, there's an, a conference. I and mean, it's a fun conference. It's lots of music and dancing. And it is called the Balkan Folk Conference. Uh, with some variation of that. So adding some of that life, that country vitality uh, of the villages, uh, perhaps even having some of those perform the, the women's course or whatever, having them sort of include their little spot of where they originated from, and then add some of the actual uh, current culture that is, is musical and rhythmic, and there's, and there's instruments, and there's the, even the rhythm of the dancing, even if we don't show the acting, we didn't have a footage of the dancing, but just as an enrichment to the experience. Yeah, this is um, definitely we want, uh, there was a one point that we had to have a Balkan project, the whole Balkan project, uh, and to connect, because uh, Balkans was in the fashion for a couple of years, and now it's actually falling down, which doesn't mean that this uh, a region, whatever is it defined, uh, is still very interesting for further research and could be learned from. Uh, so. At this point, we want to actually learn from the experiences and knowledge from all these larger projects that were happening before us, involve them into ours. But you must uh, consider that this is not a regular um, curatorial process where we are determining exactly what's happening. And it's, of course, beautiful to involve these projects, but if they want to, because uh, we, you know, we are not going to be directors of an enormous festival. This is really already expanding and getting out of our control. And that is what we want. Um, but we want to, you know, let it go and at a certain point just become artists and do our projects. And once the system is established, then it is running. And we are running a part of, of this section uh, with the money that we have <laughs> applied for. But this same kind of model can be applied by anyone else. You can take over and, and ally yourself with us or with someone else and make your own projects within this. But we are all bound with this same umbrella. Right, like your case, we, you know, there, there can be connection with uh, uh, like s events you know, mutually happening in similar time or same places or information shared so that people get to know the other, and that way it connects, right? Uh, but we, like, for example, the, uh, the people, in theory, right, that people can present, uh, develop their own project. Put it up on the website. Right now it's Europe, uh, www.europelostandfound.net. It's very premature because the system that we have is to be open now for several months, and then we will structure it based on the, you know, what kind of contents are being put in. Uh, then the uh, people, let's say you have an idea and you put up an idea and, 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 and some people find it interesting or some people find it that it's bad, they criticize you, you know, and blah, blah. Uh, that's the way we see it kind of working. There are other organizations like Balkan Black Box in Berlin uh, uh, and uh, Temple Bar in uh, in in, in uh, Dublin. Uh, who else? Uh, there are a bunch of organizations that are already aware and they're interested, but they will more work more independently. Actually, strong in uh, in Den Haag as well. That they might define their own project, right? And then uh, you have a kind of a collective pool of works that we could pull in to produce a post-production work of exhibition or something or conference. They also could uh, you know, invite us, some of us, one of us, or so forth. So peop uh, the events and organization also can go in and out just like the, the Lost Highway itself works. That's how we hope that it will work out. Yeah.
Yeah, or however, yeah. If, peop if people want to go and uh, please, you know, I mean, we are happy we get a lot of questions, but it, we are already so long, so don't feel uh, bad if you have to leave us. But who wants to ask, please? <laughs> yes. Uh, I wanted to say that I understand why you wouldn't want to uh, engage all the dancers from the countryside in per person this project, because maybe paradoxically the cities are the only force of territorial cohesion there, and uh, this religious and paramilitary takeover of the states that we know uh, as balkanization has its basis there. So, you know, Play with that if you want to turn uh, organization upside down and turn it into a positive concept. <laughs> uh, uh, but also, I see that in your project there are some dangerous points uh, that might play into either this or uh, into viewing this towards the ironic uh, survey of uh, the bizarre countryside. So, I wanted to address these issues and see what you want to do at this. First of all, uh, there is a touristy element of the entire thing that uh, stems from the uh, great economic inequalities between the hosts and the guests. And also from the very structure of the enterprise, which consists of taking pictures, photographs of uh, your desired things from uh, an ironic standpoint. I mean, I know this is not uh, your intention here, but this is the It can happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it can be, be some kind of fancy tourism. And fancy in the um, in the sense that it can also be a groupy thing because it's about uh, creating a society, and if that society has no content and no way to represent itself, then it's just groupyism, or however you call it. <laughs> but if uh, you can find ways uh, for that society to self-represent in a very smart and thought-out way, then that can be correct. So, but what what are we doing to uh, prevent this from becoming uh, groupy? A groovy thing, <laughs> or or a, a, or a naive uh, walk on the landmine okay. project. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the, the the okay. Let's start with the first thing: is that that we the, there are several things after our trip, uh, seeing the projects. Uh, there were three major major exhibition of visual art in, uh, about the Balkan in the last three years. Hero Zeman and uh, uh, Rene Block and uh, who's the guy at uh, Karsu? Uh, but there, there was three major exhibitions. Basically, EU has the money. The people, artists in the Balkan needs money. EU wants new artists and the Balkan, Western Balkan has not been tapped. So it's a mutual arrangement. They want to be, get out to the uh, Europe, international more, you know, exposure. Uh, you know, the problem with uh, the, the down there is extreme isolation. You know, uh, people can't travel, not even within uh, the former Yugoslav. Right? So uh, that there is a benefit to that, and we realize this. Uh, also, we also realize that there is uh, exoticism, uh, uh, romanticism about the Balkan from the outside, and also there is self-victimization from the inside. You know, and self-orientalism. Yeah, and uh, self-organization. You know? yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's not so simple, right? And then you know, then you have this tourist, you know, thing, right? So one of the things is that when, when I had a meeting in Berlin with the Balkan Black Box people, right, and they were like asking various questions, like, what, what do I do when I get there first thing, you know? And then I wanted to say, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, of course, it's a little harsh. But there was a way of like, we talked a lot about not giving too much information at all, right? So that uh, people don't come in with idea that they're gonna be served that there is an event, there is exactly everything planned, right? That gets into a bit like automatically, uh, uh, you know, a bit of a tourism no matter what, you know? And uh, so we thought, oh, maybe we just make it more difficult. Then, you know, real, only the serious people were coming, right? I'm not sure whether what the final strategy would be, but one of the direction now is that, that, that people, maybe what, happens is that that
people themselves construct information before people go there. And once again, that we now need to get people from the area more involved in this project so we can make 50-50, so there is no longer distinction between travelers and the host. We think that the uh, people in the ex Yugo and Albania would be just as interested to travel the other section of that area they haven't visited for 20 some years, for example, right? That's really very, you know, uh, very, very typical situation there. Uh, so this is the one way we don't have a complete, uh, you know, uh, solution to, but what it means is that then that, that in spite that we say some things like here, border as creative space, uh, blah, blah, we're going into this groovy anti-state uh, you know, rhetorics and issues. But there, I think that we're beginning to see that we have a border of ourselves that we're making. You know? Do we accept anybody in the society? Everybody, anybody, right? Do we make ourselves complete replica of the society there exists? If we are going to make a different society, then I think there is a, some kind of an idea that a, a border has to maybe start developing. You know, and you know, who gets to come in, who doesn't, who comes in and gets expelled, might happen. And that, that how do we do this? We need to figure this out. We don't have an answer now. That's, yeah. and, and also, um, I mean, I think important point in this is that really people from uh, the non-West Balkan people are coming from the outside in, but the same amount of people from the inside is traveling. That's the third point. Um, and these kinds of representations is, you know, this is our selling material to get people um, enthusiastic and interested, but it's also, these were our personal projects. Uh, all of the slides we've been showing today um, is basically our group project. Each one of us in our initiating group has contributed with text. We are working together on text, on slides and everything. Um, so that's that. Uh, I think the important point rather than collecting some kind of exotic ETA material, is really to throw yourself in an uh, experience that you don't know, uh, the territory that's unfamiliar to you and where you are possibly scared to go. And you are dependent on other people and you start, you know, and you are responsible for other people. Just think of this text <laughs> message system. If you don't send it out, you may throw, you know, like a whole branch of the society will not know that that certain thing is happening there. So uh, I think these issues are much more important to, to try to initiate there, the communication and trust that has been lost. That's what I would like to add. Uh, if I add one, add one thing that I, was very important for us <coughs> was that, <coughs> that we actually just want to deal with the future. Uh, we don't want to deal with the war. Uh, mm. We don't want to go uh, 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 into the past, unless if the past does have uh, uh, is a, a good, good historian, I guess. You know, a lot of you are, I guess. I'm, I don't know, I'm just a naive guy. I guess, you know, reinterpretation of the past uh, to the interest and benefit of the future, right? And that we're interested in that. But uh, we, we recognize there has been a lot of great research projects so far, uh, artistic research projects. Uh, but we want to benefit from that, we want to build from that, and we want to go to the future. We don't want to dwell on the horrors of the Balkan War, you know, and the guilt of EU not doing or defending or uh, what is going on now in terms of uh, uh, economic uh, interest uh, 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 going south and so forth. Uh, it's a mutual benefit. Uh, not all aspect of globalization is bad. It allows the uh, possibility of balkanizations to occur because that is the reaction, that, uh, that uh, globalizing reaction of a smaller fragmented movement organizing among themselves 
but still stay independent, but I think it has a very much its own behavior of globalization as well. So these, we have basically some of these frameworks that we have thought about in rough sense. Yeah, that's, I think we forgot to say this one, no? Yeah, well, although they you know, the, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, this is important because uh, we want to encourage projects that are not um, only reflective. It's not, you know, data gathering and representing what you find there and visualizing it in a pretty diagrams, but more uh, making contemplations of the future. And for that, you use the present and the past, of course, uh, in your research and, and your understanding. Uh, but we really want models for the future. That's what should come out of, of this project. I think there was yeah. one more. It's just one short reaction to, I mean, you're talking about going into the future and not using past or value. But first, I can't really, like you said, that, or dwell on the economic situation right now. But when I see these folks, all I see is numerous criminals who have built these fortresses on the bodies of dead people, and what I see is exactly the economic structure of the Balkans that is what causes most of the problems. So I'm saying, I'm, I'm not saying that you're not correct in creating something new, and you don't know what that new is, but I'm saying that was my reaction to those slides. So I would say documentation of this trip, mm -hmm. um, at least up to this point, has channeled me into thinking that. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope that maybe there are other ways to document it. It's hard to document, of course, but mm -hmm. that, that would instigate less of that retrospective, maybe. And because that's what my reaction was. So maybe, I don't know. Uh, to which uh, uh, the, the specifically the slides, the first slides, Zagreb, Belgrade, uh, Skopje, Oh, you mean this? Okay. No. Yeah, like the, the houses, that, that you know, me. The, the villas, as you call it, the urban villas. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that's, they have a specific cultural meaning among a lot of people in the Balkans, and I'm sure you know this, but I have a very negative reaction to them because they're not just expression of Balkanization, they're expression of violence. So. The, 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 the beginning series of images was the one that you yeah. felt the most... Uh, uh, the and the Balkan villa. Mm -hmm. the, the urban villas. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Huh, interesting. Why, uh, why, uh, could you be a little more specific? Uh, what kind of feeling that you got out? Because people who built them are not you and me. People who built them were the people who were in cahoots, as they would say, with those who have perpetrated We wouldn't have the money. They wouldn't have money unless, right, right. Right. Uh, well, the, the uh, I mean, the, that, I think that we have to look at it. Uh, 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 it's difficult to say because I'm an outsider, right? And uh, you know, I get the benefit of looking at things uh, uh, new, but maybe not clear. Mm -hmm. You see? Uh, uh, maybe not clear. Yeah. Well, uh, there were maybe they have been thrown in here all together. Uh, we have done different kinds of work research that we were unfortunately able to show in full depth here. Um, not by myself, but my Marietica Potrč and Sergej Jovanovic, um, documenting different types of urban villas, like uh, the Silicon Valley and uh, you know uh, the uh, Dolina, kako se <laughs> The valley, the valley of the thieves, yeah. from a very critical perspective, and this documentation, you know, means to show what is going on and what are these people doing. At the same time, similar housing typology, uh, you find it in Bosnia on the countryside where refugees are coming back, or people, um, you know, the, the former guest workers, copying maybe the same model, and. Um, this is not necessarily to put all these people into the same pot, but it allows you a reading of a new society that is not having a directed planning from above, but is building its own economy from below. Uh, what these people have done uh, is very different and very specific in different locations, and for that we have different projects. Um, but what is interesting is 
you know, the mean of occupation of public space, just taking over land, building uh, a fence, putting a flag on, and building up for your clan structure with the self-provided uh, business in the bottom. Uh, that, that comes from that. Um, and you are definitely right, but we ourselves are not going to be working on projects like this. This is uh, the survey of the land that we want to present, how it looks there to you know, present to people who are not coming from there. Uh, and from our point, what we see interesting in there. Um, but we want actually projects for the future. So, yes, please. Point to, um, oh, I would just like my one, one more last, question. yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Just in light of the brief and sharp. <laughs> in, in light of the last two questions, I felt that uh, one needs to go back and perhaps actually um, highlight what I feel is uh, conceptual paradoxes in what you have been presenting. I mean, the two last questions have highlighted some of them. But uh, this, if it's a project for the future, then you have to be aware where you are standing. And the idea that the past is not part of your experience, of course, makes you claim that you are an outsider and therefore ignorance of what's happening in there doesn't really allow you to use it as a tabula rasa to move mm -hmm. to the future. It seems yeah. to me that the past is very important and you cannot really claim that you are addressing the future without a fair understanding of the past and perhaps actually taking a position vis-a-vis -vis the past. And in a sense, I'm looking at the way the project has been presented and I'm feeling to myself a highway is a thing of the past. A highway is something that has a beginning and then it has an, an aim. It's in, in most cases, highways have been imperial projects, have been projects actually that uh, brought people together, not because the people wanted to be brought together, but because some external force has decided that they ought to be brought together and consequently excluded some other people from being part of the highway. I like your SMS idea of a network that actually goes out and perhaps instead of a highway, and if you are really futuristic, you should start thinking about the network, about a, a beginning point that is totally undecided and you don't know how it's going to branch out, rather than sort of like the linearity that is imposed in the highway. And the other thing is, again, in the idea of the past, you are accepting Balkanization. You are accepting the Balkan as it is by presenting us with what is being called the West Balkan. Perhaps actually a challenge is to say that the border is not from Ljubljana down to Tirana or down to the border of uh, 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 Greece, but actually Greece is part of it, or Italy is part of it, so that you allow yourself to take away from the pattern of what has happened and the idea of these uh, criminals that have been presented to us. Perhaps you bring us other examples of social exploitation, of economic exploitations that could be parallel rather than actually focusing on one and ignoring what, what the reason of that social and economic exploitation that we were seeing in the examples that you showed were basically the war. That is very specific, and therefore you have to be specifically engaging that past in order to be able to move to your future. Yeah, uh, that was a very concise <laughs> question. <laughs> okay, then I will respond. I think you're absolutely right on every point of that, you know, and uh, I couldn't agree with it really more on it. Um, and, uh, but maybe I exaggerated about my denouncement of the past, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, and I did it because that, uh, uh, perhaps because there just been, have been so much over, uh, over fascinations with the past, and especially recent past of uh, ex-Yugoslavia, for example, right? And uh, that I continue to see this in a cultural project, and especially in the policy uh, areas uh, and conferences, that it just kind of, uh, I feel that, and that we should just kind of move on, you know, and to look to the future a little bit more. Maybe that's what I should have said. And I think that people, uh, especially in the southern part of the uh, uh, Western Balkan, which is, by the way, politically, it's uh, Yugoslav minus Slovenia plus Albania. Uh, they are much more oriented to the future now, given the potential 
to build their life uh, uh, for some time in Kosovo in a very limited time, afraid that this time would close up on them. And I realized that there are, uh, uh, there are dirty laundry money coming to be able to build these bricks, but there are also, as Azra said, that, that it's uh, also uh, other people are participating as well on this kind of uh, eclectic self-expression uh, of their ideas. And, but we are interested in uh, presenting those things, uh, those dirts, as well, because they, they, they are part of, uh, at least that's maybe my personal opinion, part of uh, the, the, the context uh, of the situation there. Uh, and so uh, I, there's, I, I think I forgot a lot of uh, your other uh, uh, a great uh, criticism, but I have a tape so I could study them afterwards and try to improve myself and to be uh, yeah, yeah. To, to be an acceptable outsider. <laughs> but I'm always outsider everywhere I go, so it's no problem with me. Um, I think the point that you uh, brought up. Uh, the breaking away from the pattern. That's, I think, what we are very confused about how to dock on that and uh, that, you know, how to engage <coughs> and disengage from the past at the same time because we are moving through area where people do not want to maybe communicate with each other at all but should. Um, I mean, we have managed in our group to find to each other through our work. Uh, we have been brought together by personal networks and because we work on similar issues. And we hope that that kind of dialogue will be established as we go along um, the, the highway. Um, and the high, yeah? yeah. Well, what did you balkanize yourself? <laughs> we did. Like if you started speaking in different languages from the West. <laughs> That's the motto. <laughs> the balkanize the self motto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Is that, is it part of the oh, that's part? right. The highway. That was a good, good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got to get back on that one. You okay. were about to answer about the highway. It is a bad idea because it starts from one place, ends at another place. It's usually by a dominant uh, 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 institution, especially now as a part of quarter, uh, 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 quarter 10 of the EU uh, strategies to expand itself all the way to, gee, I think almost to Vladivostok, you know. But anyway, you want to, maybe you had some idea about the highway. Yeah, I think, I think the beginning is not clear yet of this highway. The, the, um, ending of the highway is clear for us that it's undetermined. Mm -hmm. So it's this endlessly growing network that can basically also take over the world and the world can be connected by six people. Uh, but the beginning, I think, yes, this is an issue and this is the present. Uh, but somewhere you have to start. So we started from the goal and the goal was to get the rhizome of individuals networking. And so you just stick your finger in that and that's the beginning point that will generate the rest. That's our hope at least, systematically speaking. Politically speaking, um, it is something that still um, needs further discussion in our group because we are all coming from, I, I have been to Belgrade first time after the war for the new years. And it was very important and um, a learning experience for me to, yeah. But it's, it is very difficult at the same time, you know, to um, open up yourself against prejudices and fears that you have been informed over a long period of time, learn about the other. And in our group, we have managed it so far. How we will transfer this to others I hope this really will go through these personal networks. Um, the highway is a placebo um, to stage and localize and, uh, these, these events, but uh, we are not following the whole you know, line. It, it 
this the original highway was just going like four cities. We are extending it. Um, we're not really that interested in the highway of brotherhood and unity that people have to drive on that thing, you know? That they can go anywhere, any uh, way they want. I think that uh, we're looking at the highway, you know, uh, that, that there was, uh, yes, uh, it's, uh, it was a political propaganda at, at, at the moment, of course, uh, not, uh, everything is, you know, including the Walmart today, they're going to support their competitors around them. Uh, it's a new strategy. Uh, so it gets very complex. And they, uh, that, uh, but there was like people who believed it uh, individually. There were like uh, Anna's father, 14. He lied about his age to join it, and he talks about it. And then now we have this highway of emptiness, uh, uh, so to speak, like any other highway. So what we may be thinking, at least this is, would be my opinion, is that this is not the same kind of highway. This is a highway, the actual physical form, maybe like uh, rhizomatic, but it's a mental highway uh, to move, uh, to change, and to evolve. That's the highway that I would mm -hmm. like to think about. You know, But that's my opinion, and others have disagreed with that. And, yeah. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah.